You should remember that in my module four lecture, I said that compared to a style guide, a style sheet is concise and specific. When editing specific material, you need to save time by listing all the standards and choices you've made about editing the material in one place. That's a style sheet. In that earlier lecture, I presented six typical types of information included in a style sheet, and I provided several sample style sheets on Canvas with the comprehensive edit assignment, but I want to briefly lead you through the editor's choices in another style sheet in this video. We're going to consider a style sheet for editing the standard operating procedures that are part of the Integrated Cultural Resources Management Plan, or ICRMP. You use some of that material in the Editing with Word tutorial during Module 6. So let's see what a group of student editors chose to put into their style sheet for copy editing this material. At the top of the first page, the editors clearly listed the material to which the style sheet applies. ICRMP, Standard Operating Procedures Style Sheet. They also listed the date, November 8, 2018. The next information lists the editors who created the style sheet along with their contact information. So obviously the editors themselves don't need this information. It's on the style sheet because the style sheet goes to the author and then to anyone else who may need to update the material in the future. The next section lists the standard references that apply to the material. In this case, the main ones are the GPO style manual and the Merriam-Webster dictionary. The editors also list other references that should be used and when they might be applicable to the edited material, like the Texas Military Department website, the Law Library of Congress, etc., etc. Obviously, these are specific to the material being edited. The following section lists format specifications for things like margins, figures and tables, typefaces. For this material, those specifications are important because the authoring organization intends to print this material. If format was outside the scope of an editing job, none of this information would appear in the style sheet. Likewise, if there were even more format specifications for designing, so we need colors and we need more, more about where to find graphics, all that stuff would need to be in the style sheet. The next major section that starts on page two addresses style specifications for content. For example, when to use commas or hyphens or numbers. They're listed here because they're different from what appears in the GPO style manual. There's no reason to list it in the style sheet if you're simply following what's in the style guide. It's listed here so that people know we're doing things a little differently than our major style guide says. There's also a section describing the preferred voice and tone for the edited material. This section would actually be stronger with some examples just a sentence or a phrase or whatever, um, both those that do and do not accomplish whatever the desired tone is. Then there's a section describing when acronyms should be used and how. And then the final section is an acronym and word list. These lists are compiled by the editors as they go through the material to ensure that anyone who edits the material will choose the same acronyms or use the same words or use the same spellings of words. They need to be listed in the style sheet because they don't appear in the comprehensive references used. For example, Facilities Management Office, FMO, doesn't appear in Merriam-Webster's dictionary, and that specific acronym do also does not appear in the GPO style manual. It's listed in the style sheet so that editors, authors, whoever works on this material in the future knows that FMO means facilities management office. It's not supposed to be used for anything else, and that's exactly what is supposed to be used after facilities management office is introduced the first time in the material. This particular style sheet is four pages long, or almost four pages long. Without the format specifications or 
a shorter list of acronyms or words, it would be shorter. With more format specifications, it would be longer. The point is, editors share their style sheet with the author and with anybody else who's going to have to update the material in the future. These things that are in the style sheet are not easily found, or maybe not found at all, in the other references. So you can see in the style sheet that I just showed you, number one is covered. Number two, yeah, number three. Uh, yes, number four. There's a little bit about number five and number six. Um, I'm not sure capitalization is in there, but formatting definitely is. So these six are the most common types of information to include in a style sheet. I encourage you to use them in the one that you're creating for your comprehensive edit.